forward teaching. And I I do see I had a chance to look over there at the uh, comments and and I have a brother or a sister R C I say is little bit being a little bit candid and that is true. Um when you see things on TV, they are straightforward. And we have to look at this straightforward because they're going to keep pushing it to you straightforward. But when it's presented to you in this certain form, it's a little bit more candid because now it's more shocking. So that's one of the reasons why it was done that way. So, so I'm glad you actually woke up and you see what we're doing because of the topics because of the topics and we looked at a few things even uh, this past week when we put out the first trailer and when that trailer went out we had some people which I, I really I don't um, what we say uh, I don't hold my tongue or I will not tolerate people who put up and post such things as to me is stupidity because what they did they sit there they looked at the three wild sheep as 666 because of their horns but the horns is what sheep has which is stupidity but one thing I want them to remember is this one thing I want them to remember is this because that's what they went to then they went to the song and said the song wanted to make them sin which is (laughs) two things which is crazy because if you go look at the song, in the song it actually is Saints Sinners. It tells you exactly what it is. But one thing you always remember is this. And I want you to, and I'm not going to go to it here, but I'm going to read it to you and let you know what it says. But you can go to Sirach or you can go to Ecclesiasticus, which is one of the same books. And I want you to look at <clears throat> that in chapter 39 and go to verse 25. And it says, for good things... For the good are good things created from the beginning. So evil things for the sinners. And I'm using that verse to mainly point out to you, no matter what you see, you're going to always see things and you're going to try to look behind it as finding something evil in it. That's with those sheep. That's why you're seeing what you're seeing. Because sheep has nothing to do with 666 and you don't even know what 666 has to do with anything. That's part of the problem. But people have these issues to where they're always trying to tie something else to something evil. But to those people, evil things are created for them. So one must remember the same thing is what the focus is, is on homosexual, pornography and masturbation. And one must remember, the Bible is very frank. And I'm not looking on to where a lot of people like to sugarcoat, dance around verses and what people are like to ease anything. That's that's not me. That's not my makeup. Yeah, I'm going to deal with this quite frankly. So we we have to look at this because we got to be unsqueamish about it. But we have to look at homosexuality. We have to look at pornography. We have to look at mas- masturbation. All these comes down to a certain thing. is sexual sin. And at the end of this this lesson, anyone, if you're a homosexual you're a masturbator or you love to indulge in pornography and it's contrary to what this lesson is I have no problem opening up the class and let you make your statement if it don't have no bible tied to it because most people sit there and they run to John 3.16 where God so loved the world if one you need to know what the world talking about that's point one so most people will try to run there. And I can take you to John 17, 9. He said he prayed not for the world. Same as I don't pray for homosexuals. People would come to me with their 
loved ones and they say they they love ones either homosexual or whatever but pray for them whatever happened i don't pray for them at all and you're going to find out why when we go through this lesson here so i'm very upfront i'm very direct about what we're doing but the main thing is we need to clearly understand what this is talking about and hold on to what this is all going to be because this is committing iniquity acts of sin against God for all which is dealing with one body one body not two I'm going to show you something to where we're going to go down into this and we got to see what's happening here so we're going to go over here. We're going to look at Romans and I'm going to show you something. And we're going we're gonna to take our time to where you're going to clearly get this. Romans chapter one, we're going to look at verse 27. Highlighted it so we can see it. And it says, and likewise, also men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust. I want you to clearly get what he's saying here. See, because you burned in lust. One towards another, men with men, working that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense in their error, which was meat. See, not seeking the natural use of a woman, which caused them to do other things with men. With men. Same thing I sit there and we talk about different things and you see people where they then went and they have been incarcerated and if they're incarcerated then sex with another man. No matter what they see, no matter how you look at it, no matter how you focus on it, no matter how whatever you think, if they have had a sexual encounter with another man, that makes them 100% a homosexual. They can say, say they're not, but they're homosexual. If a man can make another man have an erection he has a problem. He has a problem. Same vice versa with a woman. Let's look at something. In the law. In the law. In in something else I do want to share with you guys. I do um I can't apologize for for YouTube, but this was actually set for today. But for whatever reason, this morning when we get up, we actually see they actually moved it out to the 24th, to July. How they did that, but, you know, they control what they do. And, you know, but it's a little irritation. So I know some people might have went out and couldn't find out what was going on. However, we we looking at this and seeing what's going on. And it says, in the law, in the laws of God, and we know a couple of things what we're going to see after this. It says, thou shall not lie with mankind comparing with womankind. It is an abomination. That is an abomination. This is clearly telling you in the first five books in the law, telling you right up front what it is. And if we know that, why do it say this in Psalms? 89 verse 34 my covenant will i not break nor alter the thing that is going out of my lips so he's not changing nothing so if this never change and this is telling you the same thing in the same as we'll go over here to hebrews hebrews chapter 13 and we're going to look at verse 8 and it's highlighted. It already says, it says, Yahweh Shai the Messiah is the same yesterday, including today, including forever. So we know that the Most High God never changes. So if he said something and he's saying this is an abomination, then this is an abomination now. Having perverted similarities and structures set up, then a male to male or female to female, etc. relationships has no part with the spirit of God, but has every part with this talking about the flesh. So these are things we must remember. 
These are things we must remember. See, and the Bible speaks in spiritual reason, giving you carnal similarities to understand the spiritual side. We're going to look at it. We need to look at this because I want you to get this as we go through it. Because once we start going through this and we start going deeper to this water, we don't need to make sure we're not sure how deep we need to go to where we're not understanding. So I need to make sure you clearly understand every piece as we go down through here. So it won't be no misunderstandings nowhere. Nowhere. We're going to look at Hosea. Hosea. And we're going <clears> to... <throat> We're going to look at something. We're going to go to chapter 12. And we're going to pick this up at verse 10. And it says this. Let me highlight. And, let, and it says this. It says, I have also spoken by the prophets. This is Christ talking. But he also spoken by the prophet. These are people who he's using their mouth. And he's using their vessels to where he's going to speak his word. I have also spoken by the prophets. And I multiply visions and use what? Similitudes. By the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophet. And he's saying he has spoken to you doing these things, including the parable of similarity by the ministry, meaning this ministry is talking about the service, the work that they did for God. That's what that ministry is. His service. So you will see carnal acts to gain understandings and parables to where you can see what he's talking about spiritually. We bring you back to focus. Fleshly things for lust. Problem is this. Did you ever know when you look on in the common, the common dictionary, the common dictionary, and you look in there and you see in the common dictionary, you see lust and it will allude you to sexual fantasies, a strong sexual desires. Did you know that? But people want to sit there and hold to the common dictionary. We'll show you something, show you something. I'm going to go to Matthew. Matthew chapter 5. Pick this up. At verse 28. Highlight it. And it says, But I say unto you, that whosoever looketh on a woman to lust after her, committeth adultery with her already in his heart. And do God hold that against you? 100%. You done looked on a woman and you done lust after her. And people sit there, well, I didn't do nothing, so I didn't sin. 100% you sinned. You sin. Don't play the game. Because it's telling you when that lust happens, see, some people like to mix up lust and desires and try to blend the two. Again, it comes up to stupidity. Because like I said, we gotta, we got to be very frank today. We got to be extremely frank today on what's going on. But when you try to tie the, 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 the lust and the, the desires is one of the same, or some of them will say it's synonymous with desire, that's stupidity. Let's show you the example. Let me show you an example real quick. We got to look at this and um, we're going to go to Luke. We're going to go to Luke and we're going to go to, uh, we're going to look at something else here and make sure that we, um, we're going to make sure we got something going on here. In um, Luke chapter 22 is what I want. 22 and we want 15. This is the one we want here. And I want you to pay attention on how he's using it. He said unto them, with 
desire. I have desire to eat Passover with you. Interesting, isn't it? And he's talking about this, but he's telling you with desire. So the question becomes desire and lust. How people want to sit there and say is one of the same. It's one of the same. It's not the truth. That it have unto thy judgments at all times. Because desire is to take pleasure, longing, or wish. That's all it is. Because desire is to take pleasure, longing, or wish. That's all it is. I'm going to show you another. Same thing, like I said. Take pleasures. That's what desire is. But let's look at this. I want to show you. Make sure. We're going to go to Romans. We're going to see Paul even using other words to do the same thing. Romans chapter 10 in verse 1. And he tells you this. He tells you this. He says, brethren, my heart desires, desire, in prayer to God for Israel that they might be saved. That his heart take pleasure, his heart longing in prayer. Do you follow what he's doing? This is showing you the direct changes on lust and desire. It's talking about two different things, but people will teach you and you let people teach you saying that one of these synonymous one another. And that's not the truth. Back in the law, it's even used as, as this. Deuteronomy, we're going to go over here to Deuteronomy chapter five. We're going to pick it up at verse 21. And it says, it's, neither shall thou desire. See that? You should never, neither shall thou desire. So what is that that encompassing thy neighbor's wife? So what is that encompassing? Take pleasure, longing, or wish for. Follow the point. Neither shall thou covet thy neighbor's house, his field, or his manservant, or his maidservant, his ox, his ass, or anything that is thy neighbor's. You shouldn't take pleasure in that. So how did this work with lust? Lust is a main source of things which you can crave. It's actually just death. I'm going to show you that. To show you how these two works together to where we can understand exactly what is happening between the two. Because that's a crave. That's a crave that you have and it's technically just death. That's all it technically is. And we're going to go to Psalms. We're going to pick this up at chapter 81. And we're going to park this over at verse 12. You're going to see what happens here. And you see how it goes when it goes. It says, so I gave them up unto their own hearts. Lust. Wow. Then he clarifies it. They walk in their own counsel. So if you're walking in your own counsel, now you're going to sit there and you'll take pleasure and you'll be sitting there. If you're longing for something, you're going to seek it no matter what it is. That's what you're going to go after. That's lust. You don't care who it belongs to. Don't take pleasure in your neighbor's wife but if you lust after her you don't care you're gonna lust and you're gonna seek that you're gonna seek that and let's look at another let's look at some some more to where we just can understand what these two actually are and as we get deeper into it we'll see how this actually goes in Ecclesiasticus, or some people say Sirach, but either one. And we're going to go over here to, to Sirach, and we're going to look at chapter 20, and we're going to pick it up at verse 4. 
watch how direct this is. This is saying comparing as the lust, the crave, the killing, the death of a unit. Dang, of a unit. Talking about a chief. To deflower a virgin. So he is executed judgment with violence. You talking about someone who has power and you see burned in their own lust. He's telling you in their lust to where they will deflower a virgin. So now we say the same thing. So now we're saying the same thing. So it says the same thing when you look over here back at 28. But I say unto you that whosoever looketh upon a woman and lusts at her have committed adultery already. So if a man crave and he's seeking this, this is the problem. This is the actual issue. And they won't only, when they crave, they, these men will seek there and they're seeking, they even ask. I'm going to show you an example, even when we look at Susanna, and you'll see where these men sit there and they lust after her and they seek her. And they thought they can do other things to her. Let's go to 19 and 20 in Susanna. And you'll see this. If you read the story, I'm telling you, it is, it is an eye-opener. It says, now when the maid were gone forth, the two elders rose up and ran unto her, saying, what did they say here? You, you're going to see what they're talking about. Remember, the garden doors are shut, that no man can see us. And we are in love with thee. For that reason, could send unto us and lie with us. You go back and read it. You'll see this woman is married. They know it. But they snuck around and looking around, peeking and doing all these things with this woman to sit there and see. So as soon as the people, they got them out, they closed the door to where now they can sit there and they want to satisfy their lust. Trying to get her to lie with them. And then when she didn't, they lied on her, trying to have her killed. The only who saved her was, was Daniel. Look at, look, 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 look at verse 8. I want you to see something in verse 8. Let's go back to verse 8. Just, just to get a little bit of what's going on here. It says, And the two elders saw her going in every day and walking. So they seen her going in this garden every day. And it says, so that their lust was inflamed towards her. You see this. It's not a desire. They're lust. They're burned in this lust to where they, they want to get to. So lust is the is a psychological thing that's made of a simple process. But the lust in the process of the word used in the Bible, lust begins with something and lust starts with an attraction. I don't care what it is, it's going to start with an attraction. Keep that and write that down. I don't care what it is, it's going to start with an attraction and that attraction is going to spark the lust process. I want you to stay with me. So when you sit there and you have an attraction, you have a lust process that started from that attraction. I don't care. You have people who will sit there and will be attracted sexually to babies. Think it's not true? 100% true. You see babies out there getting raped every day. Little boys. Why do you think? Uh, um, um, uh, Boy Scouts of America had a problem they have. Why do you think a lot of these uh, Catholic churches has a problem they have with those altar boys? Why do you think um, 
You know, some of these black churches had a problem they have. Little girls. You have an attraction process to start with men. You have an attraction process. I'm talking about men looking at another man. You have an attraction process that start with a woman looking at another woman. And only one thing can have that attraction start is the basic thing which you already have in you, which is lust. Which starts the process. Which brings you to one thing. Brings you to one thing. Not many things, one thing. Lust of the flesh, carnal things, temporary things. You cannot lust after something you cannot see or think. It's the same as us living without God. The thing starts with of the flesh. Let's go, let's go, let's go a little bit further with this. Because a lot of people think that they like to shy away from homosexuality. And this is where we're going to start nailing this down. Because people think it's something completely different. In Ephesians uh, chapter 2. We're going to look at verse 3. And it says this. It says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past, in the lust of our flesh. Now I want you to watch this. I want you to pay attention to this. So it's lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires. Because where's the lust? It's over here. It's in flesh. So flesh and you fulfilling them, you trying to get them going on. And including of the mind. And where by nature, the children of wrath. Even as others. Where do it start? Where do it start? Lust is of the flesh. It pinpoints it. Flesh and flesh has the desire of carnal temporal things. Things of this world that are temporal. Actually, we can go up to verse one and tell you right there. It says, says here. It says, and he hath quickened who were dead in trespass and sin. He is quickening this. But I want you to see how direct he's going to get it with this. I want you to see how direct he's going to get with this. Verse 2, it says this. It says, where in time past ye walked according to the course of this world. So if you walk into the course of this world, you're walking according to the flesh. You're not walking according to the spirit. You can sit there and say whatever you want to say, but you're walking according to, the, to, the, to this world, which is of the flesh. And it says, according to the prince and the powers of the air and the spirits, that now worketh in the children of disobedience. Now you see the problem. We, we can kind of start seeing the problem because trespass. I want to make sure, just like I said, I don't want none of us to have an issue with anything as we move forward. Trespass. That's ignorance. Ignorance and acts of sin, thoughts, in wickedness trespass so I don't want you to trip later on when people oh no well 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 my person was born this no cause we gonna deal with this oh no they was born like no 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 go play that game somewhere else go play that in the Christian church go play that where they say God hates the sin but loves the sinner Go play that in the Christian church. See, being disobedient to God is fulfilling the works of the lust of the flesh. So what is slaying the dragon? So what is slaying the dragon? 
is the light that's taught that is of the acceptance of this world. Not planning for the world to come, but planning for the world what is here right now. Homosexuality and its desire of lust. So we have to look at the differences. You have homosexuality, and you have pornography, you have masturbation. And the question always going to become is, is it lust or is it desire? It's a twisted, extremely twisted perversion of intimacy. Lust and desire. Because we need to make sure we got a clear difference between these two. And stop putting desire in the in the in the in the in the context unless that desire is being fulfilled through lust. Because desire don't mean I desire to have her. You need to understand the clear difference between the two. You need to understand the clear difference between the two. And this twisted perversion that that is going up. So same thing as this. You have this intimacy. And then the same thing you have in the Christian arenas. One word knowledge, homosexuality as being sinners. But they'll tell you, God loves them. But God only hates the sin. So they use this all the time. They use this all the time. But we, we go, we're gonna look at that part too also. But they're saying that God loves the sinner, which means God loves unrighteousness, wickedness, and wicked acts in your flesh. That's what it's saying. That's what it says when they say that. So this is why this is a problem. But this is what people are taught and people have a problem with when God speaks frankly. When he speaks frankly with you, people have an issue. Let's look at Deuteronomy chapter 25. And I'm, I'm going to show you something to which people will sit there and they, they, they try to, they don't like, they don't like to go to Old Testament. They don't like to go to Old Testament, where the laws are. And it says, it says, it says this, for all that do such things and all that do unrighteously are an abomination unto the spirit of thy God. This is clear. This is, I'm crystal clear. So if you're doing an abomination, man with man, woman with woman, God loves the sinner, but he hates the sin. You see the stupidity starting to kick in. Show you something. Let's, let's look at it a little bit deeper. Let's go a little bit deeper. Look at it a little bit deeper. We're going to go to Psalms chapter 1. Pick it up at verse 5. And he's saying this right up front. It says, for that reason, the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. Some, some people might say, Damn, I never knew that verse was there. It was there. Always been there. Because he's telling you. Those that do unrighteously in our abominations. Unto the Lord thy God, you are not going to stand in the in the judgment area of the congregation of the righteous. This is the problem people keep telling you and telling, oh no, we gonna all go in there. No, he 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 loves the the sinner man, but he just hates the sin that you're doing. No, 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 no. Don't get that mixed up. He hates the sinner as well as the sin. Don't play the game. A homosexual is a homosexual. 
sitting there burned in lust. And we're going to dig down into that to show you exactly why this is a problem. And they think that they're going to stand in the congregation of the righteous. Peter said this. Peter said this. Made this clear. Made this perfectly clear for us. For Peter, first Peter chapter four, picking it up at verse 18. And it's actually, it's already highlighted. It says, if in providing, including providing the righteous scarcely be saved. The righteous scarcely be saved. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner shall appear? You tell me. If they going to scarcely be saved, now you got people, these, 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 these dogmatic hell preachers telling you, oh, God loves the sinner, but he, he just hates the sin. Really? So if... They sit in there saying that they going to make it and the righteous going to scarcely be saved. How in the world is these people who are sinners going to appear that, that easily? Oh, well, all you did was just a homosexual and you just did these things and everything's cool. We all cool. So going on in, you just know not to do it in there. Hopefully you, you stay right. Are you serious? Are you serious? Amos cleared some things and he said this. Amos chapter 9 and, and verse 10, he says this. It says, all the sinners of my people shall die by the sword. God loves the sinner. So why, why did he have this here? They all going to die by the sword. We got a problem. Which say the evil shall not overtake nor pervert us. Or prevent us. I'm sorry. Prevent us. Are you serious? Sinners gonna hold to those type of ideologies. The, the, the stupidity that sinners is unreal. They're gonna tell you, oh, we can do this, we can do that, we can hold on to this, we can hold on to that, and guess what? He's still gonna accept us even though we're sinners. Are you serious? Are you are you are you really serious? This is the craziness that's going on in this world. You sit there and we see these things and we think, oh, well, it's no big deal. It's no big deal. It's no big deal. You know, God, you know, God loves this, but he loves this. No, 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 no. Stop doing that. And it tells you even in second of trees, chapter, chapter 15, verse 22, it says my right hand is power. Shall not spare the sinners. He ain't going to spare you. He going he gonna to lay the smack down. But you still sit there and you see how people telling you sinners. Well, God, God, God loves the sinner. <laughs> he just hates the sin. God loves you. Yeah, really? Really? He says, for the man who do such things in our abomination unto the Lord thy God, he's still going to sit there and tell you, you coming into the kingdom. Man with man. Man with man. Perversions. Women with women. Perversions. He, he says a little bit more here. Let, let, let's, let's look at it a little bit more. He says, including my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood upon the earth. Why is he saying that that way? Because you're getting other people to believe your same crap. And you done shed it innocent blood. Are 
Why the Bible tells you it's more simple for heaven and earth to pass than one jot or one tittle shall cease from this earth. Why do you think it says that? You, we, we, we'll sit here and we'll listen to stupid men and a lot of stupid women who call themselves they want to be preachers. Stupid men. And you let them grab a verse and as soon as they grab the verse, they proceed to put everything that they want on it to make you feel good. As it, God loves the sinner and hates the sin. And you walk around, yeah, I know I'm a sinner. But Christ died for my sins so I can continually sin. Okay. Let's look at verse 23. Let's look at verse 23 here. It says that it says the fire is going forth from his wrath and have consumed the foundations of the earth and the sinners. Guess what y'all going to be like? Like the straw that is kindled. Y'all going to be y'all going to be the starter of the fire. Y'all going to be the starter of this fire. Hell, many people going to go, deservingly so. Deservingly so. Sinners are like straw. They're going to start the fire with God. You have doctors and people telling you it's okay to be born. Oh, you know, they was born homosexuals. Oh, they was born like that. Lying. And you, guess what? Many people believed it. Many people believe that kind of crap. They even try to use science. Well, no, scientific fact shows that if you, this gene right here, they get that gene, that gene is a homosexual gene, and it, it's okay. Really? Really? You want to hold on to that? You stay with that. You stay with the world. That's why it's so easy, so quick where people sit there. Well, I need the numbers. I need the people. I need the people to stay with me. I need the people to hang out with me over here because we, 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 we're going to grow and we're going to have all these numbers. And if I got to lie a little bit, I got to lie because I need the people. If you want to hang out and be a sinner, this channel goes up and down, bro. Find one. Find one. Don't play the game. You ain't born that way. It goes back to lust of the flesh, which is lust, which you're going to, you're going to do the desires because you're going to act out on it. In which the correct way to identify functioning of homosexuality, which we got to do. We got to remember one thing, the correct way to identify it. Let's look at something. Let me show you something. We're going to go right back to Psalms. We're going to go to chapter 81. We're going to go to chapter 81. And we're going to pick it up at verse 12. Actually, uh, it says, So I gave them up unto their own heart's lust, and they walked in their own counsel. Exactly the point. Exactly the point. So if he's doing this, the same as we just we, we, we just re, we just check these out. So if we just check these out. We just recapping some of this to, as we're going to move forward in in uh, Ecclesiastes chapter four verse. I mean, chapter we need chapter 20. We need chapter 20 and we're going to grab verse four. Actually, we got it. It says comparing it is the lust of a unit of a chief, somebody who's carrying power to deflower a version. The deflower a version. The Bible says homosexuality is an act the same as one being a sodomite because he said this and it was clear the first time 
he was clear the first time when he said this. And people still don't want to hold on to what the truth is in the Bible. That's the biggest issue we have today. Because they want to sit there and, and they tell you, it says, thou shall not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. It's an abomination. It's a complete abomination. But the main thing is, I'm going to put a couple of them up here because I want you to see exactly how this actually works out and see what's going on. We're going to put up Romans. We're going to put up Romans. And we're going to go to 27. And you see it says, Likewise men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burned in their lust, one towards another. Men with men, working which is unseemly, and receiving themselves the recompense of their of their error, which is meat. But I'm going to show you the part we need, because that's because it actually ends with that thought. That's what you want to focus on. Men also leaving the natural use of the woman, burning their lust one towards another. Men with men. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as womankind. It is an abomination. It is an abomination. He, he he doubled down on this. Most people don't even, he doubled down on this. Actually, I'm going to show it to you. He, he, I just thought, he doubled down on that. Double down on this same thing. We'll go to, we'll go to Leviticus chapter 20 and go to verse 13. Actually, it's highlighted. If, if a man, provided a man also lie with mankind, comparing he lie with woman, is that clear enough for you? Is that clear? Both of them have committed abomination they surely be put to death. That's the end of that thought. Their life shall be upon them. That homosexual life is upon you now. People even sit there. They like to have those people and they sit there. And, oh man, this is my friend. This is my boom coon. Oh, they so fun to be with. You like that life. Burned is what? Burned in their lust. It, as it's telling you over there in Rome, burned in there means you being consumed in this. You're consumed in it. It's like a fire that's burning in. And it, when a fire, if you sit there and you put a put a, put a fire on a on a on a on a on a stick, it's gonna consume all of the stick. Same thing. It's burned, it's being consumed, so it's consumed in their lust, all of it. The entire body. You consumed in this. You consumed in this. And you're going to fulfill the lust of it. You're going to fulfill the lust of it. Look what they did to Lot. Let me show you something what they did to Lot. We're going to look at Genesis and look at Genesis chapter 19 and we're going to look at something. Chapter 19, verse five. Now these men came to Lot's house and Lot took a man. And I want to show you burned in lust what they did. And it said, they called unto Lot and said unto him, where are the men which came into you to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. They want to have sex with them. They want to have sex with these men. These was men of Sodom. Men of Sodom. Sickness. The sickness. You have this over even in Judges. We'll go to Judges. We're going to go to chapter 19. You see, you're going to see it again going to see it again. Chapter 19, we're going to go to verse 21. It says, so he
brought them into his house and gave peradventure into the asses and washed their feet and did eat. But watch this. What, what, what? Just watch what happened. Watch what happened. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, remember the men of the city. Certain sons of Beliah. Really? Beliah. Actually, let me unhighlight this. I'm going to actually share this with you. I wasn't going to do it, but I'll share it with you. Beliah. Most people don't even know what that is. But I'm, but I'm going to show you what that is. That means someone's useless. Wickedness. Good for nothing. That's what that actually means. Useless. You guys the name your daughter that. That's what you named her. She's useless. She's wicked. And good for nothing. That's what you. If you named your child that. That's what you just named your child. That's the main part we got to understand. So we, we look at this. And once these certain sons of this useless good for nothing beset the house round about and beat the door and spake unto the master's house the old man saying bring forth the man that came into the house that we may know him we want to have sex with him we want to have sex with this man they telling you they burned in lust now they want to fulfill their lustly desire. Don't be deceived. Sexuality, immorality, nor adulterers, nor adulteress, nor male prostitutes or homosexuals. Actually, let's go. I tell you what. Let's go here. <laughs> let's go somewhere. Let's go somewhere. I, I want you to clearly get this, because people are gonna keep sitting there thinking. And and they and they dislike when you do these, even the teaching touching on this, and they, they feel offended. I don't care. Because what they want to do, they want to lie on God. They want to lie on God. And then they want you to be respectful to them and lie on God. And it says, Know ye not that unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Did you know that? Unrighteous. That the unrighteous is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. Be not deceived, neither fornicators, nor adult, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor infirmists, nor homosexuals. It's right there. Actually, I unhighlight and I highlight it just for you. Nor homosexuals, nor sodomite. It's not gay. Gay, gay, gay is clothing. But they didn't change it to where they can make it sound kind of cliche. Nor homosexual, nor abusers themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor coveted, nor drinkers, nor rivals, nor torturers shall inherit the kingdom of God. You're not going to inherit the kingdom of God, but you'll go around and you'll lie on it. You'll lie on it. You have people sitting there. It's why I sit there and said the same thing. People like to sit there and play the game and they'll sit there. Well, well, we got some homosexual in here, but it's okay. No, let a homosexual come back there in the class. And I see that they are homosexual. You're going to get, you're going to get dealt with right there. You're going to get dealt with. And as we go on, you're going to find out why. We're not here to play games with, with, the, with, the, with, with this word. You got guys who sitting there like, well, man, I was in jail for a few years, you know, and I had knees. Well, I'm going to tell you what, you take your knees over there to, to some homosexual place. Don't come play this game with me. But this is what people do. These are things that people do. 
churches. We need a um, second address chapter eight. We're going to pick it up. And uh, we're going to look at this at verse at verse one. Saying this. <clears throat> and he answered saying, the most high have made this world for many. You get this. He made this world for many, but the world to come for few. See, this kingdom was made for many. The cycle of life, the generations, however, it's another world coming. And the one that's coming is made for few. It's not made for fornicators, adulterers, infirmants, homosexuals. It's not made for you. See, they can sit there and say whatever. It's not going to change the word of God. But they're thinking, oh, no, well, no, well, you say that. No, the Bible tells you that you just dislike it because the Bible says it. So what you try to do is attack the person that's actually delivering the word. Oh, no, well, no, you you way off. Oh, you this, you that. No, it tells you right there, nor infirmant, nor homosexual will inherit the kingdom of God. This is clear, crystal clear, crystal clear. Man with man, burned in your lust. Woman with woman, burned in lust. And the worst part is, you have been the same some of our people who has made themselves billionaires and we'll sit there and support everything they show. Men with men and women with women. We'll, 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 we'll support it. Oh, no, that's bad. Well, what else we gonna look at? Look at anything but that. Go out there and look at, look at paint dry. Do something, but you ain't you don't have to watch that. Watch what he tells the trees. He's gonna talk to the trees. And he says, I tell thee, a similitude, a parable. He's gonna give him a, a, a similitude to where he can get it. Comparing thou when thou askest the earth, it shall say unto thee that giveth giveth it. The mold where the earthly vessel are made, but little dust that cometh of. Even so, the course of this present world. Most people don't even. That was so serious, unreal. So serious. The angels telling, giving him a parable of the earth. This mold that created many things: people, vessels, cups, plates, bricks, houses, walls, steel. All that stuff came from the dust of the ground. That's where they're getting it from. That which gold coming from. Gold come from there. But watch this. Even so the course of this present world, so the same thing is, guess what? You only get very little dust from where gold is. You, you Very little gold. You got you to gotta hunt it. So with the course, the distribution aspect of what he's saying here, this distribution aspect, even so is the distribution of this present world. That's why he's saying it even in that way. But we, but the biggest problem, we don't understand the function. So we so quick to run to a Gentile dictionary. Oh, let me see. I'll well, say this right here. And five years from now, I know they're going to change it. Stupidity on top of stupidity. This world ain't, this book ain't changed in over 400 years and we're quick to go get a 2020, 21 dictionary and see what the new words mean. See what these same old words mean today. <laughs> if we ain't stupid, I don't know what stupid is. This is the silliness we get into.
So why he says that very thing right here. This is why he says that there be many created. Well, well, what about everybody else? Many created, but few shall be saved. Only a few. If you, it says this actually, but I'll tell you what. <laughs> Let's see, Christ's going to say, he's going to tell you the same thing. He's going to tell you the same thing over here because he, he's dealing with the same thing. We're going to go to Matthew chapter 20. We're going to pick it up at verse 16. Saying the same thing. The same thing. It says, so the last shall be first and the first last. For many shall be, so many be called. Many is called. But few are chosen. And if you scarcely be saved, the righteous scarcely be saved. Where in the world is the sinner going to show up at? Nowhere. The biggest problem we have even with this world and when people sitting there talking about the world as a world of whole is a problem within itself see because when we sit there and we look at everything as a whole everything as a whole we got to remember what we're talking about because the bible is really only talking about israel so if it's only talking about israel it's to israel but israel like to sit there and throw things and we can sit there and say yeah i get what you're saying i understand what you're saying however however when you want to look at it directly on what it's saying, oh no, it's talking about us. I'm talking about us. It's talking about us. I'm going to show you, show you something. I was just talking to one of my diggers. Me and him were just talking, going through this. I was showing it to make sure he got what was going on. <clears throat> and it says this in Isaiah chapter 40, picking up at verse 17. It says, All nations before him are comparing nothing. And they are counted to him less than nothing in vanity. People sit there with all other world. Oh, I get it. Oh, I get it. But that right there, he's talking about the 12 tribes. That's what he's talking about. Because Israel is a nation. Them 12 tribes are separated. <laughs> you son to Jacob. If you sons of Jacob, you're not Israel. Why, why, why are we saying that? Now, I'm going to show you why we're saying that. I'm going to show you why, why that's said. Because a lot of people have that problem with that. A lot of people have a problem with that. And I'm going to show you why that problem is there. Romans chapter 9, picking it up at verse 6. Not as though the word of God has taken none effect, for they are not all Israel, which are of Israel. So he's saying the same thing with all these nations before him as nothing. He's telling you the same thing because just because you're Israel don't make you Israel. Some of you guys are according to the flesh. Why do you think he says that? Why do you think in verse 8 tells you that? That is, they were the children of the flesh. These are, not the children, these, these are not the children of God. Why do you think he says that? So if you're part of the nation, don't make you Israel. You got more people running around. Oh, well, I'm Israel. It doesn't okay? You think you're going in just because you it? Homosexuals, infirmants. Are you serious? Are you serious? Let's, let, let, let's dig a little bit deeper on this. Let's go a little bit deeper on this. This is the biggest problem within Israel. We find out one little thing, just like the Dallas Cowboys like to do. They'll win two games and they at the beginning of the year and they think they're going to the Super Bowl. All they got to do is win two games in a row. They swear up and down they're going to the Super Bowl. Well, we're we, we doing pretty good. We're going to the Super Bowl. Dumbest crackheads I ever be, be running into. They win two games and they think they're going to the Super Bowl. The only teams I ever know that do that. That's the only team I ever know to do that. Let's look at uh, Ezreus chapter 6 and we're going to go to verse 50, 50, 56. And it says this. It says this. It makes this clear. It says, as for other people which also come of Adam. 
This is what people teach. People say, well, we got other people. We got all the other nations came from Adam. No, they didn't. Don't, 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 don't. When you want to sit there and you want to look at it, the truth of it, you get it to where people won't be thrown off. And then as they get older, you can show them and start showing the, 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 the true understanding and run them through the, the precepts of it to get it. But they also come of Adam. <laughs> This is the craziest thing in the world. Because it said, thou hast said, they are nothing. Who are they talking about? Them ones that's talking about those 12 tribes. They are nothing. If you're not Israel, you come of Israel, so you better make sure you clicking with Israel. If you ain't clicking with Israel, with Israel. If you ain't clicking with Israel, then that word of God has taken none effect on you. And if it's taking none effect on you, guess what? You're a child of the flesh. You are not a child of God, and you mean nothing to God. You better get that right. You better get this right. This is not the game. You done came to the wrong place at the wrong time, found the wrong channel to sit there to where I'm going to end up telling you the truth and some of y'all ain't going to like it. Came from Adam. He said, they're nothing, but like unto spittle, have, le have likened unto abundance of them that drop and fall it from, from a vessel. He gets more into this too. He gets more into this. See, that's why I said, just like under spittle, that's why he says this. I'm going to show you something. Why, why, why he even talks the way he talks? Why he even talks the way he talks? Revelation chapter 22, picking it up at verse 15. He says, actually, let me blow it up so you can get all of it. I want you to see all of it. And make sure. And we're looking at 22 verse 15. It says, for without who? Where that word of God is taking non effect for without are dogs. He ain't having no dogs there. Sorcerers, whoremongers, men with men, women with women, murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth make it a lie. You'll do anything to make the, the word a lie. God loves the sinner and hates the sin. Bold faced lie. You like unto spittle unto him. Like unto spittle. That's what he's talking about. That's what he's making sure you're clear on. This is why he makes sure this is really clear to you. But he says this. See, because people have the problem where they sit there and want to figure out what's going on. And I'm going to show you some things in here that a lot of people don't like to know. Don't like to know. Let's look at this. Let's go. Let's let's go to Second Trees. We're gonna go to chapter five. We're gonna pick this up at verse twenty-eight, and they can sit there and tell you whatever they want to tell you. Verse twenty-eight. It says this, because this is one of our problems. It says, "And now, O Lord, one of our, one of our biggest problems. Why hast thou given this one people over unto many? Why?" It's, it's funny because it hurts so much. This is the stupidity we get into. We'll do all this infirmant silliness. And then the first thing we do, as soon as the worst thing is going to happen, the first thing we, God, what you, God, what's going on, God? You act like you don't even know what happened. And we do it like clockwork. Why are we getting over the many? And upon one root has thou prepared others, and why hast thou scattered thy one people among many? The question you asking, and we ain't thinking about the stupidity we did. We ain't thinking about that. You see, and he said this, the same thing. I'll show it to you. Let me show it to you to make sure you clearly get what he, what he, what he did. I want you to clearly get what he did. So you won't be based on this same issue that we're that we dealing with. So we're going to go to Genesis chapter 9. We're going to pick it up at verse 27. Verse 27. He says this. He says this, tying to this. Tying right to this. And it says, God shall enlarge Japheth. Now, in Hebrew, it says pathal. 
Spot path up. Meaning what? He shall deceive. He's going to persuade Japheth. That's what that says. This is what Jewish people don't like. When you sit there, when you know what real Hebrew is really saying, they don't like that. The reason they don't like it, because you can expose them too easy. That's the issue. And he's saying, he's going, he going, he going to persuade Japheth and he should dwell in the tents of Shem. So he's going to be in the land of Shem. Thinking he's Shem. Thinking he's Shem. And on top of that, watch, it gets even more. And he said he was going to do this because of our stupidity. I'm going to show it to you. I'm going to show it to you. Why? Because we, we, we just, we just, we just, we just, we just uh, boy, I just, <laughs> we, we have problems. We just have problems. In, in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 21, it says this. It says this, and, and you shouldn't even have, we shouldn't even have a problem. It says, they have moved me to jealousy, that which is not God. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities. <laughs> okay. And I, I, am, I, will, I will move them to jealousy with those which are not my people. Them. I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. Them. The stupidity we get into. The silliness. The, the games we like to play. And then as soon as he sit there and do something, the first thing we do... God, what, what, God, what's going, what's going on, God? I don't know what's going on. Oh Lord, please, what? The biggest problem we have, we are full of adulterers. A man, even a woman, but a man don't know how to sit there and be loyal to one wife. And a man that can't do that is a fool. F-O-O-L. He's a fool. Fornicators, idolaters, witchcraft, hatred, wrath, strife, heresies, murder, drunkenness, and such like. All fall under all fall, all fall under this in what you say in the Deuteronomy. So we are scattered among many in their sin, and then we are joined to sexuality, this homosexuality, and with other all these other perversions. This is the problem. The plan, the plan of God, we don't even know what it is. So as I said a couple of weeks ago, what if God just were willing to show you his power? He reserved his power to, to do in all this unrighteousness. But Paul even said that. What if, what if God just willing to just show you his, 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 his wrath? Let's go there. Let's get there. Cause, Cause we gotta go somewhere with that. We gotta go somewhere with this. And again, people go, Damn, I didn't even know that verse was there. Yeah, you want to tell you what? Open up your Bible and stop going to the church. Open up your Bible and read it. In Romans chapter 9, verse 22, it tells you this. What if God willing to show his wrath? I don't need that. What if God willing to show his wrath and make his power known? <laughs> I'm telling you. Sometimes you just have a loss of words because we sit there and play that as a game. And then as soon as he start laying the smack down, all of a sudden, Lord, what, what, what's going on, Lord? Endure with much long suffering 
the vessels of wrath fitted for destruction. I want you to, actually, I'm gonna you, I want you to think about something. <laughs> Just thinking about it, make you want to think about something. Let's go to Job. Let's go to Job. We're going to go to Job chapter 21. Why? Because I want you to see something there. Job 21, we're going to pick it up at verse 30 because I know that's where, right where it is. And let's see this here. And it says that the wicked is reserved to the day of destruction. You don't think so? Because we got that question mark there. They shall bring forth to, to the day of wrath. Exactly the point. Because you're fitted for it. You fit it for it. You fit it for it. Meaning fit it. When it's saying fit it over here, you fit it for destruction. Mean you was actually you was carefully prepared and you made ready for it. But he got some ways saying you gotta endure. Remember you said saying that. Some we gotta endure. So it said endure much long suffering. Let's look at something. I want to show you something else. Let's go here. Matthew chapter um, 24, 13. Actually, to tell you, it says, but he that shall endure until the end, the same shall be saved. Exactly the point. So we have to endure a lot of this. A lot of people are going to be doing all this silliness. All they're going to be doing all this lust. They're craving unto death with these people. This is what we're going to do. A lot of us do this. And this is our problem. So when we run into this problem, all of a sudden we, we, we start just developing actual contrary issues and thinking and saying, well, tell you what, we're going to put this on that man that actually teaching that and not looking at what God's saying. I hope you, I hope you get that. People have a problem with that. People have a serious problem with that. But then he's willing to show his power, make it seen and seeing the same thing is his power is being shown through them. And I'm going to show you something else. When that craving hits, that lust hit, guess what else you're going to hit? Pornography. Pornography. Pornography has a whole different driver. Whole different driver. That comes from a whole different driver. Pornography. Where does the sexual acts fit into this picture? Many people believe and intend at the end of the intimacy. I want you to clearly get this. At the end of the intimacy is fulfilling the chain of desire, which is not. I repeat it. It might come out a little bit different. Many people intend to be that the end of that intimacy of that they fulfilling that chain of pornography is fulfilling the desire, which is not. Pornography is one of the end of the street self gratifications that's what it's there that's what it's doing it has and it has this sex and it's a sex of expression a union between two people but it's created in one in an expression of one you see now I know you see the stupidity that's there you see the stupidity that's there see this is why you might sit there and say man he sound kind of yeah, I have to because I'll tell you what if somebody don't, who will? But don't, who will? Let's look at something. I'm going to show you something. We're going to go to first. Let's go to first Corinthians. Let's go to first Corinthians. I'm going to show you something. Make sure, make sure we get this with this pornography. First Corinthians chapter seven. Show you something. We're going to pick it up at verse three. And we got to understand something. It says, nevertheless, Avoid all fornication. Avoid to avoid fornication. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication. Let every man have his own wife and every woman have her own husband. It don't say husbands. It don't say wives. I just want you to think about it. Just want you to think about it. But let's look at this. It says, let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise unto the wife, unto the husband. But I'm going to unhighlight it. Why? I just want you to see this because I'm going to make sure we understand a couple of things here. Just like I said, we, 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 we got to understand some things because I'm going to tell you something. We are a foolish people. 
So we got to render, we got to repay the due benevolence. What's old, what's obligated. The goodwill towards our wife. That's what due benev- that benevolence, that's what that's saying. What's old, what's obligated. And likewise, also the wife unto the husband. What is that saying? There's, that's the showing you the expression of a union between two people, a husband and a wife. That's the obligation. That's the due benevolence. That's what's old between the two. That's the expression of that. That's why I sit there. And women love to sit there and play these little games, which I'm going to get into that. Actually, I'm going to show you. Let me let me make sure I can get all that on one. And I can get it all right there. <clears throat> and show you the problem. It says the wife have no power over her own body but the husband. Are you with me? See, 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 women don't like this. Women don't like this verse. Why? Because she have no power over body. So me, if he want to have intimacy, she has to render the due benevolence for old. She because she don't have power over her body. He does. And likewise, also the husband have no power over his own body, but the wife. And this is where the stupidity in everything kicks in. Why? Because you have a lot of women out there. They'll sit there and his husband might didn't take out the trash. He might didn't sweep the floor. He might didn't do something that was just nonsensical, which has nothing to do with nothing. First thing you say, okay, we're well, nothing for you tonight. Nothing for you. Stupidity on top of stupidity. Total nonsense. And when, well, no, well, no, I have a right. No. See, when you sitting there and it in the Bible's already telling you don't have no power over it and you said, No, I have a right, okay, then guess what? You are according to the flesh. You are not a child of God. So guess what? That channel this channel goes up and down, go find your channel. That's how this works. That's how this works. You got women sitting, oh well, well no, nah, he gotta go sleep on the couch. Stupidity two. He's in the dollhouse, stupidity three. I'm mad. So he got to sleep on the couch. Stupidity four. This is what goes on. You get mad. He got to go sleep on the couch. Cause you mad. You mad. Are you serious? On top of that, to show you how much nonsense that is, now you have a man to move to their imagination and they move to porn. Stupidity five. The expression of a fantasy and many times within their own wives, but many times they just having these these little sexual spurts of his, of, of, a, of sexuality, having these things that's going on. So the husband is also have no power over his body, but he must render the due benevolence what's owed to her to the biggest causes in divorce is this money and sex and I think sex is almost getting ready to take over money women that sit there and play that game with you they'll play the game stupidity on top of stupidity but this is why so many divorces happen because many times one have to come into that union and when you come into a union money don't normally come into the union but now you can see how the world have set it up. That's why you have uh, prenups to set up because money is coming into the union on how they want to see it structured out. So if they sit there and they already have a plan, so if this union don't work out, we can come out and we keep all what we have. That's the union. Stupidity. Stupidity. So mainly you just signed a were you guys just gonna live together contract? That's all you did. Not a marriage contract, just live together contract. Makes no sense. And then something don't work out right, you withhold the due benevolence just due to him or due to her. Based on more stupid. 
So then you have men and sometimes women who, what they're going to do, they're going to seek pornography. So one must understand pornography have a very simple goal. Pornography have a very simple end goal. One simple end goal. Most people don't even know what that is. The one end goal of, of, of uh, pornography is masturbation. Is masturbation. That's the end goal. Pornography or pornographic movie magazines are targeted mainly towards men. The main thing is this. You have a lot for women, but you see a lot for men. But the goal of pornography is the goal is masturbation, self-satisfaction. Beyond that goal, the pornography in the masturbation is create a substitute for intimacy. Technically, that's all it's doing. So this is why you have TV shows, music videos and movies and other stuff like that. Even women that shopping and they out there technically when they're out there dressed like whores and just whores being like how they dress. What they doing, they selling pornography images because now guys are sitting there and they sitting there looking at that person. And then when they get into a private place or wherever they might go, what they want to do is they're going to masturbate with the end goal of having that person with that photographic of that mind of that person. And the end goal is masturbation. That's the end goal. That is the end goal. That's what's going on here. So this is why we have to really see what is happening here. This is why we have to understand why we have to keep in mind what is happening. Because the end goal is different. The end goal is completely different. Masturbation is a form of sex with yourself. But if you have a sex with yourself, you don't have to invest in another person. People who are addicted to pornography aren't so much addicted to or lured to materials such as addicted of a self-centeredness type person, but many are committed to serving themselves in whatsoever they can do to find it in a convenient way and not with self, but it is self. It's the nature of the companionship or the relationship. So self-centeredness shows that many different ways when people you'll see when they get into things and most interestingly some things will you notice in their tendencies when you're seeing people with this pornography and and they just ways and sexual fantasies because they're going to look at people in many different ways they're going to look at people in sexual partners many times expressing it so you'll see this within themselves in a companion with self companion with self one time even my wife and i we was at a at a dinner one time and a guy we actually know we know him pretty good and he he a young girl she's a young girl she was a teen at the time and he went up and she had she had a large chest area but she was i don't think she was no more than 14 15 years old but he sat there and he told her he wanted she she asked him what piece of chicken did he want he said he wanted breast. He wanted breast. And he's looking at her. And he can see, he can see, and she knew what he was doing. He's, yeah, I like big breast. I like a big breast. He kept saying it. Now, I checked him on it. You know, he, he, oh man, I'm sorry. I didn't mean nothing by it. No. But that's just showing you a perverted desire that he had. A perverted desire that he had. Because he's looking at people on that sexual desire. So it's the same thing as when you sit in there and you having these 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 self things and you caught up with this self centeredness. It's the same thing as you sit there and you always thinking of a self. You don't think about other people. You think of self. Actually, I'm gonna show you something here. We're gonna look at Genesis to show you something. When you're thinking of self. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 38. You see a perfect example of this. We're going to look at chapter 8. And when 38, we're going to go to 8. Now, this is talking about the brothers. Now, Judah said unto Onan, which is one of his sons, he says, Go up into thy brother's wife, 
and marry her. So he's telling Onan, hey, I want you to go marry Ur's wife, which Ur had died. But he's saying, I want you to go up and marry her and raise up seed to thy brother. So he's, as you have to raise the seed up, you're not going to raise the seed up as if you are the father. You're raising the seed up as if Ur is the father of those children. That's what he's doing. So raising them up, <clears throat> it, it comes into, when you look at in the in the Hebrew lifestyle, what they would do, they're going to raise those children up and he can sit there and tell them like he's the dad, but their dad is Ur and they're being raised up in his name. So then they will always refer to Ur with what they were going to be doing. And only wasn't going to have that. Only wasn't going to have that. So let's look what Ur did. I mean, let's look what uh, Onan did. So this is what he did. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. That's exactly the point. Even though he was going to go into they his, but he can't raise them up in his name. And it came to pass when he went into his brother's wife. So he, he, he had sex with her. But he spilled seed. He spilled, uh, he, he spilled on the ground at least that he should give seed to his brother. He was in there, I don't get it. You should get it. Because he wasn't doing nothing but using her like a uh, blow-up doll. Spill seed on the ground. Another form of masturbation. Another form of masturbation. Remember, masturbation is an addiction of self-centeredness. That's what it's this addiction of, self-centeredness. And the end result is self-satisfaction. Now, the key is, it's a sexual sin. The key is, is a sexual sin. The contrast, when you're looking at scripture, it focuses on one thing. It focuses on the heart. That's the main thing it's going to focus on every time of the heart. Because God's plan is an expression of two beings being one. The plan of intimacy of two beings being one. Let's look at this and see, start understanding this. This is why masturbation is not the key. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 2. We're going to pick it up at verse 18. And he says this, And the Spirit of thy God said, It is not good that man should be alone. No, it's not. But that's the end of the thought too. But he says this, He said, I will make him a help me for him. Now, he's telling you clearly what he was going to do. So he's not speaking of making another female, which you can see in Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, 27, and 28. You'll see where he did that. He, he made a male and female, but he wasn't talking about making another, another female or the bodies that would be the sanctuaries. See, our bodies contain the spirit of God. So he said he need to make us a help me, which is he is making a spirit to which it can reside in us to help us. That's where the issue where a lot of us don't want to look at. And it, and it tells us this all the time. And when you sit there and you understand that, that's where we'll start getting full understanding of the Bible, of the Bible. In in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16, it, tells, it says, Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the temple and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you to help me that to help me dwelleth in you it's right up front he, he says this again and when we look even in Revelation we can go back to the end of the, to the book you see you see this even again we go into Revelation chapter 3 and pick it up in verse 20 and you'll see this even here. And you'll see how he's like, uh, it says, remember, I stand at the door and knock because he's standing at your heart and he's knocking. He wants to come in. If any man hear my voice, open the door. I will come in to you, to him and will sup with him. And he with me. He will come into us. He's going to, you see right here, he's making this clear. I will come in unto him. Because he's going to stand at your heart. He's going to create that union. He's going to create that bond. 
That's what he's going to do. So if he's doing these things, we need to make sure we clearly get what he's talking about all the time. We'll see this again also when we go to John. Go to John chapter 14, and we'll pick this up at verse 20. And you'll see, see this again. It says, in that day you'll know that I am in the Father, and ye in me, and I in you. So that help me is what was created for us to help us. To give us that expression of a union. But we have to be obedient to it. We have to be obedient to that union. Look at, look at it this way. Look at it this way. When you look at Leviticus chapter 11, verse 45. In verse 45, he says this. He says, For I am the Spirit of God that brought, that bringeth you up out of the land of Egypt, out of bondage, to be your God, to be your God, that ye therefore be holy, be separated. So we don't be doing getting into pornography not doing all this masturbation. There's no reason to. So we need to be separated. For I am holy. So if you need to get with him, why don't you get with him in your word? It takes two to tango. So your spirit can, can die, can die with his spirit. So if you have an intimacy with him, the parable is with God. Masturbation is an addiction. Masturbation is an addiction of self-centeredness. It's a part that's intended to be viewed as a pressure of, of, of a sexual encounter. Masturbation is nothing but a perversion of self-centeredness. That is for a man and a woman should show their union. But to fill in the goodness of intimacy to masturbation is an expression of communion between two people and they have it between one. Sex, sex is nothing more than a metaphor. It's a metaphor of a, of a relationship. <coughs> Excuse me. It's nothing more than a, re, a, a metaphor of a relationship with Christ. So slaying the dragon, slaying the dragon, homosexuality, pornography, masturbation, how can we slay that dragon? in other private misuses and how could one slay a dragon if marriage is intended to be a parable of a relationship of intimacy with God? That becomes a question. Then sexual relationship is just an expression of the content of a marriage between a man and a woman. Think about this. I want to show you something. Think about this. Let's go to Revelation. We're going to go to Revelation. Chapter 1, pick it up at verse 6. Between a man and a woman, it says, God had made us kings and priests, and his father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. He is showing you to show the expression of the union between a man and a woman. And he has made us kings and priests there's a certain reason why they even saying it even in that manner which is another teaching within itself but he's saying kings and priests he's saying that because that's the union between that right there right there alone and he's saying that the same thing you see here we go right back to Deuteronomy we're going to go back to the law we're going to look at Deuteronomy we're going to pick it up at chapter 17 and where people sit there and they have a problem with it. They have a problem with it because they, they teach it for their own lust. And it says, Neither shall ye multiply wives unto himself, that his heart turn not away. Neither shall he greatly multiply unto himself gold and silver. 
See, the scripture is talking about two all the time, not three, not four, becoming one. He always talking about two can become one, not three or four. God designed the sexuality in a marriage to be an expression of a companionship between two people, not between one person going to express it through themselves, not three people going to try to express it as one. It's not, it's a possibility. So what we have is what I would call sex offenders. Do you have the wife complains? And you have some that the husband complain. Offenders. But it, as we looked at 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we, we go back and look at it just to make sure we, we stay up on what we're talking about. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 7. And we look at 1 through 3. So the same thing is telling you right, there, right at 3. It tells you, let not the husband, let the husband render unto the wife to do benevolence. And all likewise also the wife unto the husband. And most people don't even think about it, but this is why a lot of people got divorced right here. Because they feel, I don't have to give him anything. I don't have to do anything. This is my body. It's telling right down the Bible. And then the first thing they tell you, they believe in God, which is a lie within itself. They believe in God as long as God's jiving with their program. But a lot of us forget this verse. So cheating start coming involved because they're not giving what's due benevolence. So it's going to be stupidity on top of stupidity. One person going to do stupidity and withhold. The other one going to do stupidity and go out and cheat. As a whole sexual life of the marriage and extramarital affairs kicks in. Stupidity on top of stupidity. Then you have people who are going to exhibit and which is more stupidism and they going to exhibit and they're going to end up dabbling into homosexuality which is completely stupidity. Transgender, transgenderism and all this kind of stuff. Masturbation is an expression of, of lust and not desires. So we seek these experiences without intimacy. Don't seek and feed the dragon. Don't seek and be feeking, seeking that dragon. Because the relationship is lust. That's what you're doing. Let's look at something. Let's show you something. Go to Galatians. We're going to look at Galatians. Chapter 5, verse 16. We want, to look, we want to look at verse 16. I just want to get everything from around it. Where it says, This I say, then, walk in the Spirit. If you walk in the Spirit, it's impossible. And ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Because it, it becomes impossible. So walk in the Spirit. So finally, when you want to look at the basis that is taught today, we have to look at what the person wants out of life. Not just the pleasure of gratification and not just a relationship, but they seek an eternal life. So what does that evolve to achieve eternal life? What's important? And what isn't? What does he believe in order to have that life? you think about those things so one of the best solutions when people try to offer you or get you to go with those type of thoughts he says this and this is coming from brother Paul this is coming from brother Paul we want to look at this <clears throat> and what we need to do when we have these things it says flee also Youthful lust. Youthful. In your youth, your stage of your life, where these things can have its strongest points. Flee also useful, youthful lust. It's your strongest points in your youth. But follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them 
that called on the creator out of pure heart. Exactly the point. Homosexual is the same as being compared to Sodom and Gomorrah. He's gave themselves over to sexual immorality and perversion. Think about that. Think about that. When you look at Jude 7, it tells you that. When you look at Jude, and we're going to go to verse 7, she's comparing you right to it. It says, even comparing Sodom and Gomorrah, including the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh. You're going after men going after booty. Technically what it's doing. Just being just straight blunt about it. Going after strange flesh are set forth for an example. Meaning what? For God to, to, to just show you what his wrath is. To show you what it is. Suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. What if he's willing to show that to you? Giving themselves over to fornication. So these are things we, we think on. So as we closing this out, <clears throat> let's look at this. Um, <clears throat> in Psalms chapter 130, 130, and we're going to look at verse 4. It says, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou may have be desired. That thou may have be desired. These are, just like I said, <clears throat> long as we sit there and we hold on, but there is forgiveness with thee that thou may have be desired. So we have to lay homosexual homosexuality masturbation pornography we have to lay these things down these things will actually beset us trip us up keep us out of the kingdom that we cannot do anything God once we get to our last positions and he tells us this right here. He tells us this right here. It says, Wherefore, seeing we also accomplish about with so a great cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight, including the sin which does easily beset us. We have to lay aside this. We have to lay aside our homosexuality. You know, a lot of you guys running around here with your homosexual buddies and thinking, oh, that's cool. They so cool. They just so fun to be with. Really? Really? You hanging with them in that lifestyle you're cool with because you think it's fun. You have to lay aside that weight that's easily beset you. <clears throat> and you have to run with patience. You have to set that boyfriend, that girlfriend, that BFF, your relatives. And don't let their lifestyle trip you up. How long will it take if that person is willing to surround themselves with Christ? That, that, becomes, the, that becomes the thing. That becomes the whole thing on everything that you need to see. But many of us is not going to um, look at those. So pornography and masturbation. How do you slay that dragon? How do you slay that dragon for masturbation and pornography? The Bible says this. The Bible says this. We got to see how to slay that dragon. We're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7 again. We're going to pick it up at verse 8. He says this. He says, 
I say for that reason to the unmarried in widows. Speaking to all you guys, if you're unmarried or if you're a widow, he's speaking to you. The word is speaking directly to you. It is good for them if they abide even as I. And Paul is sitting there saying, because Paul is unmarried. And it's good if you can do that. However, however, he, he, he's telling you things which is clear. However, the same thing, but if providing thou cannot contain, some of you guys cannot contain. That's why you're going to homosexuality, some going to to to, to pornography, some going into and pornography going to run you right into masturbation. You cannot contain. Let them marry. Let them marry. And the reason for that is, for it is better to marry than to burn. So can masturbation, pornography get you in hell? That's telling you right there. 100% get you in hell. But unmarried and the widows, you abide as him, it's good. If you can contain yourself, it's good. However, if you sitting there, you having a desire to, to have intimacy as you, as, you, as you once had, then or if you're just seeking that desire because you're unmarried, then it's easy for you to marry. It's straightforward. So this is the problem when we look at this. We're going to go through this. We're going to go to James and pick it up at chapter 1. We're going to go to verse 13. It says, let no man say when he is tempted. Am, I am tempted of God. This is the problem that homosexuals have. This is the lie they push. Don't ever let no man, no doctor tell you that God have created homosexuals to be tempted telling you right there for God cannot be tempted with evil neither tempted he any man so he didn't put you as they say oh I was putting the girl's body and you know, I, I came out of the man but I have a girl's body no 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 stop that lie because now you're saying God did it and God don't do it God don't do that See, because this is why the lie is there. We're going to put this right side by it. We're going to put this lie right. We're going to put this truth right by that lie on what they say. We're going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 7, picking it up at verse 29. And it says this, and it makes it clear to where it ain't no issues. It says, lo, this is, this only have I found that God hath made man upright he's the end of that thought the end of that thought it says but they who those homosexuals have sought out many inventions <laughs> this is the lie they push out God ain't tempted you like that God ain't made you this way no we made that that way. God made man upright. It was man that sought out these things. It was man thought out to be with men. Pornographic. Masturbation. God never tempted man to be with another man or a woman to be with another woman. These things were thought out with our own inventions. Not God. So we need to get off that lie. And stop sitting there. Stop getting up. Well, you know, well, no, the scientist said that. Well, then guess what? Let that scientist be your dang God. 
<laughs> you need to let him be your God. It says, but every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust. You see it don't say desire, do you? It don't say when he's drawn away with his own lust. And enticed, persuaded. Then, look, 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 look what's going on here. Then when lust have conceived, you done gave birth to this, 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 this sickness, it bring it forth sin. It bring forth those evil thoughts. And sin, when it is finished, bring it forth death, which rightfully so is going to happen. So we say this. Some people are going to hold on to what God's showing you. Some people are going to sit there and come up with their own little thought pattern. And the same thing that I tell people as always. You know, you have people who are sitting here right now and watch it. And they'll wait. Sometime later on in the day or wait a day or two. And then they'll come, oh no, I think it was wrong with it. Those comments will get deleted. Because we open it, I'm, I will open it up in one second to where if you guys want to discuss it in the class I don't have no problem opening it up immediately but this is the thing that but this is the thing that we need to really make sure we obey it says in, in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse 13 it says let us hear the whole conclusion of the matter because it don't have nothing to do with God as far as oh God did this to us God did that you know desire God keep his commandments for this is the whole duty of man that's what our duty is that's what our duty is not to sit there to believe that it's tied to everything contrary to what it is. But we will sit there and tell you it's made up of, of all these lies. That's what we like to do. We like to sit there and always think of it's this lie. And we need to understand what that lie is. So hopefully that you guys got some uh, understanding of this and that you guys may continue to to move forward on these teachings if you have an issue with it to where you can get the understanding on it. And the main thing is most people don't want to sit there and believe what the Bible says. They want to pick and choose what the Bible is saying and not what the Bible says. So when people show them what the Bible says and how the Bible looks at certain things, all of a sudden they want to point to the person that's delivering the message besides looking at the message. So they want to desecrate and demean that person. And I'm cool with it because I just don't, I'm not going to play with you. Same as I didn't play with those people who put in those things. I don't have the time for the game. But the thing is, as we continue, we're going to have a couple of other teachings that's going to be touching on a whole lot of touchy subjects. And the main thing is, we got to slay this dragon because this is the biggest elephant that is in the room that we need to look at. So with that, I hope that everybody was, was edified in some way, shape, or form and that you continue. I will be going into my, um, into the uh, proverb class after this, and you guys are more than welcome to join that one and be back there, and as we'll be picking up on Romans tomorrow. However, as I said, if there's someone right now, because I will actually make the time right now that where they want to go into the classroom right now, I will literally go in the back to where we'll open up a classroom for them if they have something else that is contrary, they saying that is contrary to what was taught. And literally show me scripture. Because the Bible do not contradict itself. That's the thing, but people would like to come out later is then say the Bible is contradicting. So right now we don't see any of that. 
So what I'm getting ready to do is end this one. And I'm going to go eat with my lovely wife, some breakfast, and get ready for the Proverbs class. So with that, I say to each and every person, until tomorrow, we'll be over at um, King James Bible University page where we'll be teaching over there. And what we're going to do there is um, we'll be going through Romans. And hopefully, uh, I see R.C. He's sitting there thinking, hopefully, R.C., you can see now why it was being really frank <clears throat> with the video. Hopefully, you understand that now. Why we had to be frank because we can't we can't sugarcoat something. We can't sugarcoat something and then kind of like we got to dance around it. You know, just kind of kind of lightly touch on stuff and then kind of get no. We can't. This is our problem. But when we we we'll see stuff that's perversion hit you directly in your face, and then we we'll are dance around it. So the same thing is, they will put it right in front of you. They won't think nothing about it. And then if you say something about it, they want to hold hold something, say something's wrong with you. So this is this is the problem with with, with everyone. And um, and I see uh, that's Sister Tasha. Yeah, Sister Tasha, you can call me right after the thing. I can make sure you're taken care of. So don't worry about that. Just call me as soon as we get off, because I know I know who's exactly who she is. So just call just call me, or I'll call you as soon as we get off, and we we'll make sure you're taken care of. But but hopefully you guys uh, continue moving forward. So until tomorrow, you know. But right now we're going to go into a Proverbs class. But until next time, I say to each and every person. I appreciate you. And as we continually move forward, we'll continue to be learning, but we're going to continually mess with these touchy subjects because we got to keep moving forward. So until then, 